Lunar module passed all its tests with flying colors. ABC science editor Jules Bergman has the story. Apollo 9 chalked up its most important and difficult triumph today with the flawless rendezvous and docking of the lunar module and the Apollo command module. Early this morning, astronauts McDivitt and Schweikert undocked the LM from the command module and fired their small thrusters to fly up and above Apollo 9. For their first orbital test, they moved out to a distance of 48 miles and did a small burn. Then increasing their speed, they came within three miles of the command module. The LEM was performing without a hitch and the astronauts then fired the LEM's descent engine hurling themselves 100 miles out. After jettisoning the descent engine, they fired the LEM's ascent engine for the first time, simulating a takeoff from the lunar surface, and then moved in for the all-critical rendezvous and docking. With McDivitt and Schweikert guiding the lunar landing bug and Dave Scott in the command module, Spider and Gumdrop maneuvered in for rendezvous. But before the docking, the two spacecraft spent almost half an hour flying side by side. After the docking, McDivitt and Schweikert then prepared to float back from the LM through the connecting tunnel back to the command module and Dave Scott before jettisoning the bug. The final step in the long and arduous procedure of rendezvous and docking. Finally, the LEM was jettisoned, and its ascent engine fired remotely, hurling the bug into a new orbit 4,000 miles high. The gawky lunar landing craft had proven itself in space. From start to finish, a complete success, as it has to be if American astronauts are to safely land and take off from the moon this summer. Five more days remain on the Apollo 9 mission, but the key questions have already been answered. The lunar landing craft has proven itself spaceworthy. Both its descent and ascent engines perform flawlessly, and the critical maneuvers of rendezvous and docking were so precise, they looked easy. A manned landing on the lunar surface this summer has now moved a giant step closer to reality. This is Jules Bergman reporting. Our next progress report on the flight of Apollo 9 is scheduled on tomorrow night's ABC Weekend News. The most dangerous and dramatic of all the jobs assigned them. Separating the lunar landing ship from the command spacecraft, flying it more than 100 miles away, and then flying it back to dock with the command module. There were a few anxious moments in the six and a half hour exercise at the beginning when the men had trouble freeing the lunar landing craft, and at the end when the two ships were joined again. The test began with some difficulty in opening the latch, joining the ships. Okay, we seem to be hanging. It seems like the probe's out. The capture lights have been released. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, we're pretty stable here. Uh, I wonder what's around with it. Houston, got any suggestions? Uh, we're copying all that uh, gumdrop spider. Stand by. Okay, you're free. Once free, the two ships gradually separated until they were 113 miles apart. Six hours after the start of the exercise, the two spacecraft were ready to dock. Okay. They're lined up. Okay, well, if you do it, I can't tell where it is. We're free now. Good go, Spider. Onboard fuel reading 65 and 65. Make it 55 and 55. Uh, Rod's reading 55, 55. Thank you, uh, Rusty. Retry. Did you get the latches? Hang on. Tonight, McDivitt and Schweikert were back in the command module. They had crawled through the narrow tunnel connecting the lunar landing ship with the command craft. The lunar ship was cut loose, and soon after, ground controllers sent aloft a signal which set the lunar ship on fire and sent it thousands of miles out into space. After today's successful docking, General Samuel Phillips, the Apollo program director, looked ahead. NBC News correspondent Roy Neal talked with Phillips about the flight of Apollo 10. The, well, the mission that we've been uh, equipping and training to carry out with Apollo 10 uh, 
uh, is a flight to the moon with the entire spacecraft, just as uh, Jim McDivitt and his crew has been flying it for these last uh, uh, four days. Uh, to enter lunar orbit, to separate the lunar module, to have it descend down to about 50,000 feet above the surface, then uh, carry out the uh, rendezvous maneuver, and of course leave the uh, LAM in lunar orbit and come back home. So it's a trip to the moon with the full spacecraft, with, but without a landing. Uh, the but, uh, General, to interrupt for a moment, could that spacecraft land on the moon on 10? Uh, lunar module, uh, as it is now on the vehicle and as it will be rolled to the pad next Monday, uh, is not fully equipped uh, for a landing. Why not? It's been our plan for uh, a long time now, Roy, to uh, carry out uh, at least two uh, operations with the full spacecraft uh, before we commit ourselves to a landing. The mission of Apollo 9 is not over, but whatever remains to be done is routine, and the spacecraft is scheduled to splash down off Bermuda next Thursday morning. Good evening. America stands one vital step closer tonight to landing men on the moon, as the Apollo 9 astronauts, for the first time today, separated the lunar landing craft from the command ship and put it through its paces. Here's a report from David Schumacher at CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. There were a few bad minutes, about 30 of them, in fact, waiting for news first that the LAM really was on its way back and then for confirmation of docking. In all, there was enough drama for everyone, especially for the astronauts, who were in more danger than most people realized. McDivitt and Schweikert climbed into the LAM early just to be sure they'd be ready on time. Dave Scott threw the switch. It didn't work at first, but then suddenly they were free. Never before had astronauts been in a spacecraft that could not return to Earth. As they fired their engines to drop back, McDivitt and Schweikert knew they eventually would have to re-rendezvous with the command module or they were lost. The first step, at a point about 100 miles back, was to put on the brakes and drop the descent stage of the LEM. Separating the LEM worked better than separating from the command ship. Okay, the staging went okay. We're uh, staged. Uh, however, Gumdrop can't find us in his optics any longer, and we may have knocked out our tracking light. The Gumdrop Spider. Our, uh, our staging works better than your own docking. Uh -huh, you went up on me. Spider, you better wait till you get back before you start that. You haven't heard me say anything. McDivitt and Schweikert felt a little better now, although they were still worried about the docking mechanism. They fired a brief burst of their ascent engine, and then they were on their way back in. Suddenly, an unexpected problem. The glare of the sun blinding McDivitt so he could not see the COAS, the gun sight that helps line up the ships for docking. I just can't see the darn COAS. I can't tell what my attitude is. Yeah. Okay, I'm lined up uh, in translation, but I can't tell what my attitude is, Dave. If I don't see it, so there it is, there. Now you're coming in. That's good, looking better. There you go. I think you got a handle on it now. I have captured. Really, Jerry. Oh, I haven't heard a song like that in a long time. That was a very nice talking. That was a docking, that was a high test. Okay, Houston, we're locked up. An elated McDivitt is offered to buy everyone a beer, and you can be sure there will be plenty of celebrating tonight everywhere that men and women have been working on the lunar mission for the past eight years. For now, the United States has tested all the equipment and procedures needed to land a man on the moon. Chances for a midsummer spectacular suddenly look very good indeed. David Schumacher, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York. Look. Because of bad weather in the Apollo 9 preferred recovery area off Bermuda, space agency officials are considering tonight cutting short the mission by one day and bringing the astronauts back to Earth Wednesday instead of Thursday. The decisions expected to be made tomorrow morning. Meantime, the astronauts jockeyed their spaceship into a more favorable orbit today, just in case any emergency reentry is necessary. The three had lots of time to chat with ground control in Houston, and in a lighter moment, got filled in on their horoscopes for the day. McDivitt and Scott are Geminis, and Schweikert is a Scorpio. Here's the conversation. Uh, 
nine, Houston. Go. Hey, uh, while you're eating your lunch there, uh, I might read to you what the astrologers say about your day. This is for both Jim and uh, Dave. You must learn to listen well. Don't get into any disagreements today. And group activity is preferable tonight. Well, we'll try. <laughs> We'll try, Ron. Okay. Hey, is three considered a group? <laughs> Stand by. This is uh, Rusty's. Be selective in choosing your friends. Get any new scheme moving promptly. I got a new scheme moving promptly this morning. <laughs> okay. I think he may have a little trouble choosing his friends for a couple of days. <laughs> That's right. In two South Carolina counties, authorities today began the second phase of a Nixon administration. Apollo 9 astronauts fired their main engine today and lined their spaceship up for Thursday's return to Earth. The astronauts were relaxed and cheerful and joked with ground control. Commander Lloyd Booker was back on the stand today. Weathermen today predicted conditions will improve in the Atlantic Ocean and space officials still are planning to bring the Apollo 9 astronauts down 200 miles southwest of Bermuda Thursday morning. Today, astronauts McDivitt, Scott, and Schweikert took more pictures of the Earth and twice spotted the Pegasus satellite, which was sent into orbit four years ago to detect small meteors. The weather is still a question mark for Thursday's landing of the Apollo 9. There's quite a storm out south of Bermuda where a splashdown is planned, and the helicopter carrier Guadalcanal is standing by. But weathermen, both at the Manned Space Center and aboard the Guadalcanal, say it should clear sufficiently for a safe splashdown. If it doesn't, they can still shift the landing point to a calmer area. But a look at what it is like aboard the Guadalcanal. Here is CBS News correspondent Murray Thompson. On the Guadalcanal, the days of waiting have been reduced to hours, and the job its men have been sent to do will begin when Apollo 9 splashes down. The fate of the astronauts hinges on the performance of this ship. Choppy seas and high winds have given the Guadalcanal a roller coaster ride, which could affect that performance. All has not gone well in the recovery drills. The rolling seas have been troublesome. The frogmen have been bothered by too much wind one day. The helicopter pilots by too little the next. A frogman lost an aqualung and another ran out of air. Several of the frogmen were exhausted, chasing the spacecraft that tossed uncontrollably on top of the waves. Three flotation collars were lost, as well as two sea anchors and a life raft. For an unexplained reason, the space agency is using different rafts than those in previous recoveries. These are lighter, less stable, more difficult to handle. NASA officials ordered several new rafts and other equipment to be flown from Bermuda to replace that which was lost. The helicopters have been plagued with a series of maintenance problems, some minor, but others important enough to require the replacement of an engine. 
Nevertheless, the space agency's senior representative aboard foresees no significant problems. Murray Thompson, CBS News, aboard the USS Guadalcanal. The Apollo 10 was moved today from the giant vehicle assembly building to its launch pad three and a half miles away. It's scheduled in mid-May to take a lunar landing craft to within 10 miles of the moon. With the success of Apollo 9, there's a slim chance that Apollo 10 might be skipped in order to go ahead with Apollo 11, in which men will actually land on the moon. In France, millions of workers... Taking no chances on a possible foul-up caused by bad weather, the space agency today switched the prime recovery area for tomorrow's splashdown of Apollo 9. The astronauts have been ordered to stay in space one extra orbit, that's some 90 minutes, so they'll be landed 480 miles south of the storm-wracked main splashdown area off Bermuda. Splashdown now should come at 12 noon Eastern time. The Apollo 9 spacecraft returns to Earth tomorrow, later than scheduled, and at a new site. There is bad weather in the original landing zone near Bermuda. So the astronauts will stay up one additional orbit and land at one minute past noon Eastern Time in fairly smooth waters near Grand Turk Island in the Bahamas. NBC News will present continuous television coverage of the splashdown and recovery beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Here is part of the conversation as ground communicator Stuart Rusa told Apollo Commander James McDivitt that the carrier Guadalcanal would reach the new landing zone in time. Okay, Jim, I just got the word here. There's no doubt about the ship being at 152-1. Okay, very good. Have it bring all the good weather it can with it. All right, or, or leave all the bad weather where it is, I guess, would be the best way. Yeah, that's even better. The waves were four feet, the swells were 14 feet, and the ceiling was 2,000 feet, and visibility seven miles, wind blowing 26 knots. Well, I don't think anybody up here is good enough sailor for that. Uh, Rog, and uh, I believe everybody here agrees with that. And astronauts are now in the ninth day of their flight, and everything continues to go well in space. However, there are problems because of weather here on Earth. ABC science editor Jules Bergman reports. With 12-foot seas and high winds roughing up the planned splashdown area 200 miles south of Bermuda, the space agency today moved the landing point. To avoid the stormy weather, the prime recovery vessel, the helicopter carrier Guadalcanal, was sent steaming southward at high speed. Apollo 9 will now fly one extra orbit, 152 revolutions in all, thus carrying its path further south. So astronauts Jim McDivitt, Dave Scott, and Rusty Schweikert will now land about 300 miles north of Puerto Rico. Calm seas and light winds are predicted. And as spacecraft commander Jim McDivitt commented, hey, let's go there. And they will. All well aboard Apollo 9. It's ironic that after 10 days in space, perilously testing the lunar bug, the weather threatened to become a major problem on Apollo 9. This is Jules Bergman reporting. ABC will cover the splashdown of the Apollo 9 astronauts beginning at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time.